My name's Lewis Brander, I'm an artist. We're here at my studio and I'm in a show which has been curated by Lewis Dowson Gilbert called We Share the Same Sky, which is a mixture of contemporary artists and historical artists and a scientist as well who would now within a modern context be perceived as an artist. At its core, I'm, I'm really a landscape painter and my work is deeply rooted in observation and sometimes taking observation and going back to the studio and working from memory, but really about trying to capture the core of the subject that I'm trying to deal with and that really is natural light. That's one of the reasons why Lewis came to my studio and, and offered me to be in the show because my works mainly deal with the sky and the colour of the sky, particularly the painting behind me and the others here in the room. So that, in essence, is really what my work is about, landscape. I think, yeah, to give some context to the two works, if we start with Variations of Light, which was started when I lived in Athens, Greece, that was a painting that I made in my studio in Athens. I started it in my studio and then I took it out to a mountain that I was living near because Athens is surrounded by mountains and I was working from observation and I couldn't resolve the painting. And I finished it from my London studio. So in many respects it has the evidence of observation and light from Athens, but really its final form is very much a kind of London painting, which is of pink clouds. And at that kind of moment, just before you kind of get to sunset, where the colour of the sky dramatically shifts. Two Trees is a painting that I actually started literally this time three years ago. It was during the pandemic, I was living in London, and of course, during those lockdowns, we had, you know, we had one walk a day or two walks a day that we could do. And I would take my canvas out and I went to Kensington Gardens and I started painting these two trees. And then I couldn't finish the painting. So I then returned to it the following year in 2021. And then the following year again in 2022 and resolved it just before a show I had with my gallery in London called Vardar Soglu. So the paintings, particularly those two, are paintings which really evolved over the course of two years and are kind of juxtaposed by two, two kind of separate locations, Athens and London. Painting a landscape is a bit like treading a fine line between a painting which can be a very much a literal depiction of what you're trying, what you're looking at, and then something which is a bit more essential as the kind of essence of what you're doing. And, and that can really be defined by gesture towards the canvas. And sometimes those marks and gestures that you make need six months to a year for them to resolve, at least in your mind. So something that I really am interested in is in natural light. And I think during my time in Greece, when I had left London, and I was exposed to a completely new light, quality of light, intensity of light that you don't really get in London, I became really fascinated by the color of the sky. And that led to a, a kind of preoccupation that I have with the natural world. Particularly being in this studio, which is seven meters up, north facing, with a view towards kind of Dalston in East London and the canal below. It's amazing because every day I can see the color of the sky changing and therefore it's just, it's kind of reinforced this kind of obsession that I have to just constantly keep looking at the same sky day after day after day and see what changes. Yeah, it's a real honor, um, particularly because working within the landscape tradition and particularly if you look at the legacy of abstraction in, in Western art. There's such a kind of legacy of the works of people like Turner and Constable. So to be included in a show alongside both of them, even if it is in virtual reality, but to kind of in some ways be considered working within a lineage, which I feel I am, is a real, is a real honor. And I guess seeing other contemporary artists as well, like Helen Kamuk, Martin Cross, and people who are also working in very, very disparate ways, but looking at the same thing, which is natural light, the sky. It's kind of, a, it's a universal subject, which is constantly going to be explored, and it's going to be explored well after I'm gone. And I think that's something I really like about the show, is that it kind of, it, the colour of the sky unifies artists through different epochs. Yeah, this is the first virtual and digital show I've ever been included in. I think, when it comes to my work, they do benefit, like any painting does, from being seen in the flesh. But the number of shows that happen around the world that I can't physically go to, 
and you sort of look at them on thumbnails or on a gallery website and what's different about Vortic is you can really get close to the images and it is a virtual environment. So I was amazed when I was looking at, the, looking at it online, just the kind of high resolution I could get and you could really see the weft and weave of the painting. So I think it's only natural that artists will respond to these new technologies and use them in certain ways to kind of explore new things in their practice. And I think because we're living through the, the Anthropocene, and obviously a lot of people are thinking about the climate and the natural world, it makes sense to use these technologies to explore them and enhance them in, in particular ways. So I think it's really exciting. I mean, I definitely am excited. It would be really nice if a lot more shows actually worked concurrently with Vortic to give something kind of more archival. It's all well and good to have great install shots, but with Vortic you can kind of relive the experience of being in that exhibition. I think it's mainly about re-experiencing the physical architecture of the space. I think that's what I find quite interesting about it. The way that I could just move around the gallery and inquire about an artwork, get the information, then of course you could listen to the audio. It's, um, it's pretty amazing. I mean, I think it'd be really good and take my London gallery. Of course, a lot of galleries have collectors outside of London who can't physically make it to shows. So it could, in some ways, replace sending them a PDF. You can send them something that they could watch on their own VR headset. And I think with VR headsets becoming more and more common and something that people are going to start buying and having at home, it's going to allow shows to be seen kind of internationally in a way that you know, you don't necessarily just have to fly to New York to see a show. So maybe it's also good from a kind of climate change point of view, of cutting down travel. It is a bit like being in a film, when you're completely immersed in a film and you're kind of not aware of time and things around you. So I really like that aspect of it. Quite a lot of people really enjoyed seeing the exhibition um, in that way. I mean, quite a lot of those works, I think would have been difficult actually to and even to get some of those artworks together in a physical space logistically could have been quite difficult. So I'm not sure if the show could have actually happened physically. So in that respect, I really enjoyed it. I really, I, yeah, I really like that.